Before the break, you saw my conversation with Rochester City Councilman Michael Wojcik regarding the health department's closing of a local business after a video surfaced showing what health officials say are violations of COVID-19 guidelines. That led into our next conversation over face masks. It was a very contentious issue locally when face masks were mandated. It's something that Michael Wojcik feels strongly about because of personal reasons regarding his mother, who he says is vulnerable to this virus, and he fears what it could do to her if she contracts it. He follows the data very closely because of this. So I started um, going to the state and county and just gathering daily totals and taking a look at um, what actually was happening within our community in Olmstead County. And then after we passed the mask mandate, what changed? What are you finding? Right now what I'm seeing is that um, there was you can't say that one caused the other, but certainly about two weeks after we passed the mask mandate, uh, the upward trend that we had been seeing for many months changed to a downward trend and it remains much lower today. It's nothing that I'm making up. The data is freely available for anyone to do and um, they can fact check me and point out all my errors. But um, I think it's been helpful to communicate this to the community. As soon as I started posting that, I noticed a lot of people were sharing it um, just as a way of communicating how serious this is. And even the Public health professionals and medical community have been real good about giving me feedback and making suggestions on how to communicate better. A lot of times people don't have a problem with the actual act of something, but it's the mandate when a government entity comes in and says you have to. Seatbelts are a perfect example of that. Yeah, um, no, I, I remember the seatbelt battles, um, and I think that. That's really tough because it gets to per people's personal values. And um, I respect the challenges, but there comes a point where you're not just doing harm to yourself, you're doing harm to others. And we saw that voluntarily a lot of people were not wearing face masks and a lot of businesses were not taking it seriously. And we've had a lot better compliance with the policy. So I totally understand that a lot of people are going to dislike me or government in general for doing things like this. But it is a public health pandemic, and, um, and I think the results, I think we're doing better as a nation. And we're see around the world, we're seeing countries that listen to scientists, that believe the science, are doing better than those who have perhaps not. And you say, comparatively to the country of Japan, uh, how we really could be doing a whole lot better. Yeah. Um, and Japan's an interesting case because they're much more dense than us and they use public transportation in tight spaces far more than we do. But they haven't seen the um, ravaging effects of COVID as bad as we have, particularly in some locations. And I think the, some of the largest differences there is they do wear face masks uh, pretty regularly, not just for COVID, but anytime anything is going around. And they're very careful, even with um, public transportation, about keeping their hands clean. And I think it shows you um, it's not a miracle cure but while it's effective. And I think that we'd be good to remember how much we're helping each other out when we take these basic precautions. Looking at where we were six, seven months ago, where we are now, if you were to look into the future and could tell what would happen, what do you think we are facing as a community? So, I mean, I'm sure we'll arrive at a vaccine or better treatments at some point, um, but it's probably, you know, realistically, it's gonna be well into next year before we see anything widely available. We've never experienced anything like this in our lifetimes. And um, if I take anything positive from this, it's when we've seen the best advances in American history, it's been when we've had incredibly challenging times like this. And maybe that's the, you know, the hope that I hold out. I think you are somebody who can be taken out of context a lot. Maybe some of the criticism is deserved. Maybe some of it isn't. I think when people hear more of the personal side of this for you, from you, um, it makes it different. Yeah, um, we live in a social media world, and um, I, I certainly do far better, um, you know, talking with people, working with people. I'm still a trained engineer. I, I love numbers more than I love people, and that's a, you know, that's just that's the science in you. Yeah, I, I communicate, and I think that the um, the frank nature that I communicate with does not translate always very well on social media, particularly to those who don't know me. But um, you know, I've always made it a point, and I, you know, just to completely leave politics out of this, it's my responsibility and the role that I have is to espouse my values and do what I feel is best for the community, and people can make decisions based on that, and. Um, uh, in social media, if people disagree with you on one issue, 
that's a big thing. But in the real world, uh, we have lots of issues that we face. And that's why I stay off social media. Good life choice. Wow. Um, you're probably going to live a lot longer than me. <laughs> I don't get as stressed out like I used to. <laughs> Thank you.